Katie Hunter from MA UK. I'm here with Adam Wilson. Adam's just been matched against Scott Malone uh, for Cage Warriors Manchester. Hi, Adam. Hello. Good night. I'm really good, thanks. How are you? Good. Couldn't be better. Happy, happy to have a fight confirmed and speak to you again. Yeah, it's like, what a fight as well. You must be buzzing for that one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I asked for it and I, and I got it. So I'm happy. Couldn't be happier. So I actually spoke to Scott yesterday and he was saying that he was supposed to fight someone else and it got it fell through before it was even announced. And he's got, like, I think 12 cancellations on his pro record. And I was saying you've suffered with loads of pullouts yourself as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It is frustrating. Like, I mean, I know I'll definitely be there on the 7th of March, so he doesn't have to worry about, about me not turning up. You should watch it. I actually said exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well. But he did say as well, the fact that you're an undefeated prospect, a lot of people don't want to take that fight. Yeah, I know. I mean, I wasn't really expecting him to take it, to be honest, because I offered... I. Um, I, I offered a few other names. I spoke, I messaged D&D &D and a few other people and it um, was just a, a, a shot in the wind, really. But, I mean, he took it, so I'm happy. What was your reaction when you heard that you'd got the fight? I was just happy. It's, uh, it's a fight that'll put me right up there. It's a good opponent. He's a nice fella. It's yeah. So, so, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great fight. It's going to be a good fight. So And I just can't wait for it. And with respect, like to your other opponents, but this is a big step up in competition for you, isn't it? Yeah, well, on paper it is definitely a big step up in competition. Uh, but you know, I've been I've been sparring and training with the highest level ever since I started MMA. So uh, I definitely won't look. Uh, it won't look like that when when we fight anyway. Yeah. And anything different in the way that you're going to train for this one or, you know, any any extra kind of... It must give you extra motivation. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm all, I always train as hard as I can for every single fight. But uh, I think I'll, I'll have to work a few more things for this one. Uh, probably just mainly wrestling and jiu-jitsu. I mean, I don't, I don't think Scott's going to stand there and I want to stand up with me on fight but you know we, you never know we might do so I'm just focusing on wrestling and jiu-jitsu for a bit um, stand up's always there so that's probably the only thing what's going to be a little bit more different I'll just probably do a few more hours yeah and I know last time we spoke was before a fight that didn't end up coming to fruition it was back in May when you were going to fight on Cage Warriors Colchester and you were saying that you wanted to remain active you got yeah. to fight again that year in, in Liverpool, but I know you're not fighting as frequently as you would like to be. What's what's the plan for this year? Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm happy to fight three times a year. I think that's a good... <clears throat> that's quite realistic for me. Um, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to do fight after fight after fight. Um, it's good to have a couple of months off in between. But, you know, ideally three fights. But then saying that depends on how I come out of the fight feeling. I mean... If I go and finish someone within a minute, then I'll, I'll fight again the week after. But if I have like a three rounder, um, it's you know it's not really ideal to jump straight back in. For me, anyway, I, I don't really. I'd rather rest and know I'm at a hundred percent every time I fight. Yeah, you've got crazy people like Ian Gary who say that he wants to fight like five or six times a year, and then there's other people who wanna. You know, just see how the fight goes and, and take it from there. Yeah, that's me, sort of. That's it. I, I just take it from there. You never you never know what... Could, there's no point planning six fights because I guarantee you he's not going to fight six times this year. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Especially, do you know what I mean? So I just take one fight at a time and, and see what happens. Yeah. And your gym must must feel electric at the moment. The atmosphere in there must be... Amazing. Obviously, a few weeks after your fight, you've got Paddy fighting on Cage Warriors London, yeah. Molly fighting at UFC London. What is the atmosphere like in the gym? 
Oh, it's great. It's uh, it's always good, no matter the. But all still, even if like say like Paddy hasn't got a fight, he's still in training with us. We still have a laugh every day. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the atmosphere in the gym's always good. But um, it's nice. It's nice that we're all fighting around the same time because I don't know. It's just nice to do it with other people, isn't it? Instead of be like the only one. Like you know, if if I was the only one and I see everyone going over the cafe and and eating. Just, whatever they want i'd be a bit like oh but you know <laughs> we're all in it together we all we've all we all can't go over the cafe so it, it's nice yeah i do always think that when there's one person in the gym with a fight coming up it just must be awful for them <laughs> yeah definitely because pe- the people aren't bothered they'll bring chocolate in they'll bring whatever in and then but you know if there's a few of us it's it's like you know you, you've got to you've got to play the game a bit don't be don't be bringing no shit food in the gym while we're all dieting and stuff. <laughs> and how how is the diet for you? What's what's your diet like most of the time? Are you a clean eater outside no. of camp? Or? No, I'm not. I'm not. That's me downfall. Um, I'm good in camp. Like, don't get me wrong, I am good. I can I can do twelve weeks quite strict, but uh, I I must burn a lot of calories each day, me. So. Um, I eat healthy. I don't. I won't. I'd never come home and have like a McDonald's or a pizza or nothing like that. You know, I get my meals sponsored anyway. So, shout out to Macro Chef for that because the meals are unreal. I mean, he gives us healthy treats. So, uh, today I had a carrot cake. There was only like 150 calories in it, but it yeah. just tasted like a normal cake. So, literally, that that's my little sugar fix. It's fantastic, isn't it? Because you like feel like like you say you're getting that fix without like actually cheating yeah definitely i mean 150 calories i could just jog around the box if i block right if i had to for two minutes and that would be gone so it's all right it's it's literally not you can have another one and go for a jog now yeah i know <laughs> i'd have the full one it gives us a piece about that big but i could like, I'd probably have the full one if i wanted to <laughs> So when you're going into fight week do you normally have much left to cut or do you get it off over the course of camp um to be honest, last time I fought, I didn't do no cut at all. I just literally dieted right down. Um, but you know, I probably, I probably will do a little bit of a cut for this one, just to just to have a bit of extra weight on me. Um, I'm a big bantamweight anyway, and like, I come back last time big, but not as big as what I usually am. Right. So yeah, it's just, it was just uh, it was just that good on my diet last time. I was just proper motivated again to fight in Liverpool. This time I'm even more motivated, but I will do a little bit of a cut this time, definitely. Does that mean that you went into camp a little bit heavier this time then? Uh, no, I'd say I'd always round the same. I never go, I never go over overweight by too much. Like I probably walk around about 75, 76 kilo. God, props to you. I wish I could stay in the same place all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, and me, I actually do enjoy it. I enjoy being in shape. Really? I like looking in the mirror. Oh yeah, I like. I would like to look in the mirror. But I don't <laughs> like all the hard work it yeah. takes. To enjoy yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, um, Molly and Paddy's fight uh, like a couple of weeks after yours. That means. Surely that you can come to London and go on the piss when you're watching them. Yes, of course. I wouldn't miss their fights for the world, definitely. <laughs> I'll be there pissed. <laughs> but will you be warming up with Paddy or will you be able to watch in the crowd and have a beer? Yeah, I'll probably stay in the crowd because I'll be going with my mates. And, and I, I, I don't really like being in the back too much at shows. I prefer to just sit down and watch the fights, especially with my teammates. Uh, it, you know, it's going backwards, forwards. I'd prefer to just, I like it to just sit down and watch them. Why is that? Is that because you feel nervous for them or like... No, not really. I, I don't feel nervous. I just I just enjoy watching it from like, from, from the outside. Yeah. No, I'd probably get too invested in the fight if I was backstage and then at the cage and then back and then... I've done it a few times and that, but like, I prefer to just sit with my mates and just watch it. Have you been to the Indigo at the O2 before? No. Um, is that where Darren Till fought? Uh, no. He yeah, he fought in the O2 arena, but oh, like, no. the Indigo is like the smaller one in the O2. Oh yeah, no, I've never been there. No. 
Oh, well, we're looking forward to having a big Scouse contingent down for the night. It'll be yeah, there'll be really loads of fun. us. There will What's, be. So Paddy doesn't have an opponent yet. That must be strange for him to be like preparing for a fight without knowing who he's fighting. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's annoying for any fighter. I had the same last time. I think I had about ten opponents before I got got to my last one, but. Um, yeah, he's just staying. He's just staying on the ball. He's just staying on the ball. He's he's getting ready as he would for anyone. So yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, it's not too much longer before he does get an opponent. So when that happens to you, and um, there is changes of opponent, or or even when you've got an opponent, say like you're now fighting Scott, how much do you prepare for that fighter, and how much in the back of your mind are you thinking? Well, it could be someone else by the time it gets to the night. So I'm yeah. kind of just too much in their, what they're going to do. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, I'm quite lucky to actually have an opponent this far out and train. Like, that everyone wants someone they can, they can put enough time, especially at Scott's level. He's a good fighter. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I'd, I'd still take a fight with Scott on late notice, but I'd be a bit more like, fucking hell. I haven't really worked too much stuff for him yet, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's good that I've got plenty of time to prepare for them. But you've got to be ready for anyone, haven't you? So if he pulls out and they get someone else on the night, it's still sound by me. <laughs> and then you've got Molly's fight on the Saturday night in London. Big step up in competition for her on paper again as well. Um, Ashley Evans-Smith, have you got a prediction for that fight? I know Molly's keen to get her first UFC finish. Yeah, do you know what? I, I am predicting a finish this time, definitely. Yeah, I'm definitely predicting. I'd say second round TKO. Yeah. That's I'm, what I'm, I'm going to say. I know she's like worked on her jits ever since she's been in the UFC as well. I could kind of see a cheeky little sub maybe. Yeah, but I mean, that that's what she's looking for. But um, I know Molly loves to whip people like I do. So <laughs> I think if Molly gets her in a position, she's definitely not going for no submission. She's going to prop it at her. <laughs> And finally, I wanted to ask you if you've got a prediction for your fight. For my fight? Um, I'm going to say second or third round knockout. I think I'll weather this little storm for a bit and be trying to get me down, get me down, and then, bang, I'll just put his lights out with something in the second or third. I can see like a... this one being a war. I just think, I think it's an excellent fight. Yeah, it's gonna be a war. That's what that's that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a bloody fight where we're both just covered in blood. That's what I want. <laughs> and I guess for you as well, Adam, this could be the one that really puts you on the map because Scott is such a big name within Cage Warriors, you know, and has um, yeah, been a title contender. Like that immediately puts you up there. And even if it's like a fight that people are talking about as well if you are both covered in blood and stuff yeah yeah i mean it is it definitely put me right up there i'm just taking one fight at a time so i'm not gonna sit here and say after this i want the belt because there's other people i want to fight as well i've called for a few names a few big names and um so you know i'm in no rush let's just let's let's see what happens after march 7th can you tell us who those other names are um, I asked for Corey Tate in London. Wow. And that's another big name. That would have been That'd another be good fight. But um, he said no. I don't think he said no because obviously he's, he's he's scared of fighting me. I think he just wants like higher ranked opponents, which is fair enough. But after the beat, beat um, Scott, then let's see. Let's see if Corey wants to take it then. I think as well, like, accepting fights is kind of risk and reward, isn't it? Like, if, you know, as as Scott said, an undefeated prospect, if if not many people, like, are talking about that person being at the top of, of that weight class at, at the current time, it's yeah. a big risk to take that person on. Um, Definitely. I you mean... see a lot of people call out kind of people who have had big careers and big names kind of on their way down because they want the reward of that big name on their record when they feel like they're a little bit easier to beat. Yeah, well, I mean, it's pretty much what's going on here. If, if I beat Scott, 
when I beat Scott, where does where does he? Uh, I've got nothing to lose. He's he's got a, he's got everything to lose in a way. Because yeah. if if he loses to me, then what does he do? Yeah. Fight. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's probably more pressure on Scott than it is me. Yeah, respect to him for taking it. Yeah, of course, hundred percent. I am I'm so happy he took it, and I'm so and I'm very grateful for him for taking it. Yeah. No, you're both great, great guys, and. I love speaking to you both, and I just think it's going to be a wicked fight. Shout out to Ian Dean, who's putting some amazing fights together at the moment. Yeah. I'm loving every announcement that comes out from Cage Warriors. I know, the cards are stacked, aren't they? Yeah. So, uh, finally, let me give you a chance to give a shout out to your sponsors or your coaches or anyone you want to say thank you to. Okay, so first and foremost, Paul Rimmer, our head coach at Next Gen. Um it's the best MMA coach you could you could you could ask for. Um got Sai Woodley, my striking coach, Muay Thai coach, um all my teammates, and then we've got the sponsors, got Macro Chef, JRC Bullies, um Eminent Recruitment, who also and Geometra Fashion. And that's it, thank you. You mentioned your head coach there. It seems like all of you have got such an amazing rapport with Paul. You all speak so highly of him and he's obviously doing something right because the gym's on fire. Yeah, of course, Paul. I'd I'd never I'd never have another head MMA coach if it weren't Paul. Uh, he knows he's the man with the plan, isn't he? He knows everything. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. Well, as I said, I'm absolutely buzzing for this fight. Stay fit and healthy. Um, I will do. I'm just sure you guys have had so many pullouts that you're both going <laughs> to get to the cage even yes. if you've got broken legs. So stay <laughs> fit and healthy. Enjoy the rest of camp. And thank you so much for speaking to me, Adam. Thank you. Anytime. Thank and you for that. Speaking on the to night. Me. Thanks everyone thank for you. watching. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Bye.